What is going on everybody? This is Yes I Read That and today I am reviewing Red Sister by Mark Lawrence. I was very excited for Red Sister. I saw tons of people recommending it, giving it a very good review and I was pretty hyped to read this book but in my opinion it's okay. I see a bunch of reasons to like the book, I see a bunch of reasons to dislike the book. I'll just break it down for you in my review here. In general, this is a grimdark fantasy book, so it's a fantasy book, but it's a bit more dark, it has a bit of gore in it, it's, it's a bit more brutal. I'm going to talk about the world and the story of the book first, and then give you my likes and dislikes, so you can understand my score. The main story in the book is very simple. There is a young girl and it's basically a coming of age story. The main character is called Nona, she's a young girl who is about 9 years old. We don't really know exactly because she's from a village in the country and she doesn't even know herself. So she is in the very beginning of the book getting saved from her own execution by a nun. And this nun is bringing her to her convent. So she's basically brought to a school teaching magic and fighting to little kids or only to little girls and the school is entirely run by nuns. The book covers a lot of her training in that convent and the classes there. It's basically like a school, there's different nuns teaching different subjects and there's a bunch of young girls training to become very deadly nuns. But as I said you can learn some magic there and the magic system is pretty interesting. There's four different ancient races. There's Quantals, Marials, Gerants and Hanskas. Some people carry the blood of these ancestors or in some very very rare cases actually multiple bloodlines and they gain a power or a kind of magic from this. So as I said this book mainly focuses on Nona's training in the convent. It is also covering the struggle of Nona to escape the wrath of a noble whose son she almost killed and uh, who also wanted to see her executed and that's why she had to be saved in the first place. The world itself is still largely unknown. We know that it's a pretty cold world with a lot of ice and only a narrow corridor in between. Uh, we know that there's four ancestral races as I said. There is a focus moon that provides warmth when it's in the right alignment for some reason. We don't know anything about the nuns, about the political forces in this corridor. Basically we don't know anything. The world building is incredibly shallow. Uh, the only thing that's built out a bit more is the magic system. As I said we have these four ancestral races. Uh, there's the Marials who have the powers to summon stuff or to shadow walk. We don't know a lot about them. Uh, there's Hanskas who are basically just fast, they can slow down time a bit, although they can't really move a lot faster, but yeah, it gives them a great speed advantage in fights. Then there's the Gerans who are just huge, they're just kind of giants. And there's Quantals who can walk the path and have access to some magical power as well that we don't really know a lot about either. So we know a lot more about the magic than the rest, but we still don't know a lot. And that's after reading the book. Alright, let's talk about my likes and dislikes about this book. What I liked about this book is probably the thing that most people found very good and that's the badass fighting scenes. The action and fighting due to the magic system is incredibly good and it's the thing that stood out most in this book for me. On top of that there's some badass characters. Uh, the main character is pretty crazy and strong and she's generally pretty badass. The nuns are also pretty crazy and pretty cool, so I'll give the book that, it's really badass. Uh, the plot moves on well enough usually, uh, it was definitely enough to keep me interested. The grim theme with the nuns and the girls training to become fighters in this grim world has a very cool premise and I really like the initial uh, beginning of the book where it set out to be like this very grim school and training place. And when the suspense kicks in, it really kicks in. It gets really intense and you really just want to keep reading. And generally it's very hard to write kids very well. But most of the time in this book it's been good. And sometimes it wasn't good, but it's just it, 
it's not really possible to write very good kids uh, that are like 12 to 14 years old. So that was still a pretty good aspect of the book. But now let's get to my dislikes and I just have to say that a lot of the stuff in this book kind of rubbed me off wrong and I just really disliked some stuff in the book. So I'll start off with the main thing and that is the main character of this book. Now while she's a badass I just think that Nona wasn't really relatable and she wasn't really charismatic either. She's a young girl who's pretty harsh, she's sometimes even pretty arrogant and I just found it hard to relate to her sometimes because she has these crazy powers and yeah, I don't know. I I don't really know if a lot of people can relate well to her, I just couldn't. Another thing that really bugged me was that there was no motivation at all, like nothing. I understand that Nona is a kid and kids generally don't really care too much about the future but this is still a book and a story and you should still give some motivation on why I should read it. So I made some notes while reading the book and when I was about the halfway point I wrote down I still don't know why I'm reading this, like what the payoff will be or what the goal is in this book. And I think I should really point this out because all of these great stories usually just feature a very simple premise. I can name a few like The Lord of the Rings, Destroy the Ring and uh, Dethrone Sauron. Uh, Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson, you know, and The Final Empire. You could go into like the huge successful anime like Naruto, Become Hokage, One Piece, uh, become Pirate King. You know, there's these super simple premises and it's just this distant goal that still works very well to build that initial motivation until you get attached to some characters and know why you want to continue reading or continue watching. And in this book it's just completely missing. At one point Nona herself even said that she doesn't want to become a nun and it's just, I don't know, for me there was no motivation at all. The story in this book starts kind of in the middle, where Nona is being executed, so her entire backstory that is pretty uh, irrelevant has to be told in flashbacks that totally disrupt the rest of the story and don't really provide any insight. It's a pretty simple backstory and all the characters feel pretty lifeless, even Nona's own mother is totally lifeless and I don't know, it just really threw me off. These flashbacks didn't really deliver a lot, but they had to be told because it's known as backstory. The next thing I want to talk about is the magical power in this book. A power system that relies on inheriting power can be good or bad. Like in Mistborn it was pretty well done and it was very clearly defined what you can do and what you can't do. In this book it's more of the Aspo type. Like she has this one blood type. Oh, plot twist, she has two. And yeah. I don't know, I personally don't really like these kinds of stuff because it, the main character has to be special and I don't really like those. But it's not very bad, it's not a major dislike, it's just a, one of these things I don't really enjoy personally. The last thing is that just so much in this book is totally unexplained. We don't get a lot of world building, we don't even know what these nuns do when they're done with their education. We don't know why these girls do this training. Do they only want to start to become a fighter? Like, it's possible but we just don't know. We also don't know what the religion does. Like, we know that these nuns believe in the ancestor but we don't know anything about that religion and for a book that plays in a convent with a lot of nuns, that was just so weird. And last but not least, uh, for me personally, because of all these reasons, this setting, this very grim and gory setting with small girls, just it just didn't really feel right. I just never felt at home in this book because the characters and the grim setting just it felt a bit foreign. So my score overall for this book is a 5 out of 10 and I know a lot of people would think that the book is better than a 5 out of 10 and that I'm very harsh but generally that's just how I felt and I won't be reading Grey Sister. there's nothing that interests me in the book. I don't find the main character incredibly interesting and I don't want to read another book for 3 cool action scenes, that's just my opinion. Still, who should read the book? 
I would say this book is a pretty good young adult book, but not too young since this is also very gory, so there is kind of a balance here. Still, I think young people could really enjoy this. People who are really into training and badass powers could also really enjoy this book, but uh, as I said, for me it just didn't really work. Maybe it does for you though. So, this concludes my review of Red Sister. Let me know what you thought about the book, probably different from what I thought. Uh, and yeah, if you liked the review then please leave a like, maybe sub to this channel and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye!